Hey AI artists, can't get enough GPU time to craft your masterpieces on Kaggle and Collab? In this video, we're setting up the incredible Invoke AI on SageMaker Studio Lab. While playing with the app, we're going to explore the pros and cons of this platform, so you know exactly what you're getting into. To get started, you'll need a SageMaker Studio Lab account. And here's the first obstacle we might find. There's typically a waiting period of one to two days for new accounts to get approved. But once your account is up and running, you're in for a treat. You get access to a GPU runtime that you can use for up to four hours a day, at least at the time this video was made. Now here's obstacle number two. GPUs might not always be available when you're trying to log in. So you might need to give it a few tries and keep your fingers crossed for that sweet GPU runtime to become available. Once you're past these initial hurdles and inside the studio lab, smooth sailing awaits. However, there's a crucial detail to note. While you can technically run the installation and test the app from the CPU runtime, it's going to be as slow as a snail in a marathon. So it's highly recommended to secure that precious GPU runtime for all your AI image generation adventures. Now, if this is your very first project on Studio Lab, you don't have to worry about cleaning up any previous work because you're starting with a fresh slate. But if you ever need to remove files from earlier projects, stay tuned until the end of this video, and we'll guide you through the cleanup process. All right, now let's get down to business. To get the SageMaker installer, simply click on the Git button in the interface and paste the URL to our SageMaker installer repo, which you can find linked in the description below. The folder should open automatically in the file manager on the left-hand side. Now, for the next step, click the plus icon next to the main tabs to get to the launcher screen. From here, select Terminal and it will automatically open in the same folder that's displayed in the file manager. Here's the magic command. Type in sh install dev h to install the specific version of Invoke AI you've chosen. Alternatively, you can use sh install.h to get the latest official release. If you want to download a different version, you can simply change the version tag in the installer file. The installation might take a few minutes, but here's the good news. You only need to do this step once. As long as you don't delete the app, it will stay installed and ready for your next creative session. With the installation complete, it's time to run the configuration script. Just type shconfigureshh in the terminal. The configuration script is essential because we don't have enough disk space in the home folder. So, the installer is set up to keep permanent files in persistent storage, while models, which are often quite hefty, get saved in temporary storage. The configuration process takes about a minute, and once it's complete, we're almost ready to go. Now, to start the app, type sh start ch in the terminal. The first time you run the app, it will ask for your ngrok token. We're using ngrok to make the app running locally on a SageMaker instance accessible through a URL. You can get an ngrok token on ngrok.com. If the prompt disappears from the output, you can simply press enter and the app will ask for the token again. Or you can paste your token, regardless of the output text. After that, the app will ask for the domain name, which is also available on the ngrok website. The domain name is optional, and if you leave it empty, you'll get a random URL. The token and domain will be saved in a file called data.json, which you can edit or delete to change these parameters. Now, it's time to visit your ngrok URL and dive into the app. One thing you'll notice right away is that we don't have any models yet. To download a model of your choice, head over to the Import Models page. You can get any model from Hugging Face that's in the diffusers format. In this version, Safe Tensor's checkpoints can't be added because converting them requires more RAM than we currently get with SageMaker. With the model installed, let's move on to the next step. I'm going to head back to the terminal and press Ctrl plus C to stop the app. Why am I doing this? It's to clear up memory so it's free and ready for generating those amazing images. In a future version, this step might not be necessary. Now with the app restarted, we can see the new model we've just installed, and we're all set to create some stunning images. While the image is in the process of being generated, I'll jump back to the SageMaker tab to perform a little cleanup. You see, this app has a peculiar habit of keeping a copy of each model it downloads, and since we're a bit short on storage space, we want to be as efficient as possible. To find and delete the cached model, here's what you need to do. Navigate to your home directory, ensure that hidden files are visible, 
and then click on the dot cache folder, followed by Hugging Face and Hub. You'll find the cached model in this location. Deleting it will free up about seven gigabytes of space. Now, while we're waiting for the image to generate, let me show you some handy commands that I frequently use. What's cool about SageMaker and what sets it apart from platforms like Colab or Kaggle is that you can open up a new terminal while a process like the Invoke AI app is running. This allows you to multitask efficiently. For instance, I often use the command dfh to check how much disk space I have. Currently, I've got 26 gigabytes of temporary storage left and 4.4 gigabytes of free persistent storage. To identify large files that might be hogging space, I use the find command with the size parameter set to bigger than one gigabyte. This is a simple way to locate and eliminate large cache files that are probably unnecessary. After deleting the cached model, I now have a whopping 11 GB of free space in my persistent home folder. But it looks like the app is still busy loading models into memory and just now it started drawing. Let's take a look at those pixels. The pumpkin turned out pretty good. Now how about turning it into a t-shirt design? I'll head over to Civit AI and choose the t-shirt style to see what this pumpkin would look like as a t-shirt design. To install Allura, just copy the download link and paste it into the model location field, just like when installing the base model. Then apply the Allura, hit invoke, and see what happens. While the image is being created, I'll use the second terminal window to check memory usage with the command watchfree-m. From the looks of it, we're running low on memory. I should have restarted the app after installing the LoRa, but this step might not be necessary in a future version. So I'll just go ahead and do that now. With the app started again, we still have all the parameters from last time, so all that's needed is to click Invoke. Now we have enough memory and the image is being created. It didn't turn out all that different this time. I'll increase the strength of the LoRa and add the text T-shirt design to the prompt. Now it looks like something that can be printed on a T-shirt. I'm pretty happy with how the initial run went, so I'll go ahead and close the app and disconnect the runtime. This will allow me to show you exactly what we need to do the next time we connect. A few moments later. As mentioned earlier, we don't need to reinstall the app, but we do need to run the configure script. So I start by running configure.sh, followed by start.sh. This time I want to use an anime model, so I'll go to Hugging Face and download Animagine. As for the Laura, I'll give it some extra flair with DreamArt style. I'll create a couple of images to see the model do its magic. Let's start with a little red riding hood. As usual, I'll open a new tab and use watchfree-m to keep an eye on memory usage. Unfortunately, it looks like I'll have to restart it after every image. Well, here's to hoping that a future release works a bit smoother. So, I'll restart it now. For the second image, I'll let it imagine a fire sorceress. The sorceress has a fiery glow about her, doesn't she? These are all the images I wanted to create today. Before logging off, I'll go over some of the useful options we have here. If you need to change your ngrok token or domain name, simply run the start.sh command with the argument reset. This will delete the data file and ask you for the parameters again. You can also edit the file data.json directly to set the parameters. If you'd like to view the images after stopping the app, go to your home folder, then invoke AI outputs images. From here, it's easy to view and download them. If you'd like to install a different version of Invoke AI or clean up some files, you can delete the Invoke AI repo, which is also in your home folder. This will allow the install dev script to download a different version of your choosing. Now, if you're done using Invoke AI and would like to free up space for another app, you can easily do that by deleting the Invoke Conda environment located in your home folder, .conda nvs invoke. To be able to see this folder, enable showing hidden files from the view menu. 
I find the du command to be useful in checking how much disk space a folder is using. The Invokai environment is using 6.4 GB. Let's check how much space we have now. So there's still some cleaning work to be done. Let's see what's taking up all that space. Ah, that's right. I never deleted the Hugging Face cache after downloading the Animagine model. Much better now. And there you have it, folks. We've successfully walked through the installation, model management, and cleaning process for Invoke AI on SageMaker Studio Lab. You deserve a slice of pumpkin pie for watching this far. Before we wrap up, let me give you a quick rundown of the handy commands I use when working on SageMaker Studio Lab. First up, df-h is my go-to command for checking the amount of free disk space. For estimating the size of a folder or file on your disk, du-sh is your friend. It shows the disk usage of files and directories. Watch Free-M is fantastic for monitoring memory usage. It's a quick and easy way to ensure that your system has enough RAM to handle the tasks at hand. If you ever need to identify large files in your home folder, the find command, with the path set to home, and size set to plus 1G comes to the rescue. It lists files in your home folder larger than 1 gigabyte, helping you pinpoint space hogs. Additionally, you can use the remove command to swiftly delete everything in temporary storage without restarting the environment. You will need to rerun configure after this, as it deletes all models. It's a quick way to free up space without the risk of getting locked out. Now, let's take a closer look at our experience with SageMaker Studio Lab. It was able to successfully run the Invoke AI app, and having some persistent storage available is definitely a plus. On the downside, the limit on persistent storage forces us to have a part of the installation in the temporary folder. In my case, I chose to place the models in temporary storage. Unfortunately, the temporary space alone isn't sufficient for both the installation and models, especially when dealing with cached models. SageMaker provides us with 25 GB of permanent storage and 32 GB of temporary storage. While the permanent storage is a welcome addition, it's essential to remember that this is the space you get for all your projects. Therefore, it's necessary to clean up the installation before switching to a different AI app to ensure it has enough space. In terms of memory, we get a reasonable 16 GB of RAM, which is more than what's typically offered by Colab. This allows us to use both a base model and LoRa. However, it's still considerably less than Kaggle's 29 GB, which offers a smoother overall experience. On the bright side, the file manager on SageMaker Studio Lab is quick and user-friendly, making it easy to manage your files and projects. A major advantage of SageMaker Studio Lab is its ability to run multiple terminal sessions simultaneously. This means you can continue working on other tasks within the instance while the AI app is busy generating images. SageMaker also allows you to install multiple Conda environments with different versions of Python. This is fantastic because if the Python requirement for your AI app changes, you can easily upgrade it to match. We get 4 hours of GPU time and 8 hours of CPU time each day. While the GPU can significantly speed up AI tasks, it's not always available. So be prepared to keep trying to connect. I found that persistence paid off, and after several minutes of persistent attempts, I was able to get in. So there you have it the good and the not so bad of running Invoke AI on SageMaker Studio Lab. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow tech enthusiasts. And if you have any questions or want to share your experiences, don't hesitate to drop a comment down below. I love hearing from you all. Thanks for joining us and I'll see you in the next one.